So as you sit in meditation, <clears throat> you remember to indicate to your mind that this is a new beginning. The mind can be very receptive to this little message that just kind of we we finished with one thing, beginning again. The past is gone, the future has not come yet. So you can just, again, I'm sure most of you know what to do, to remember just to experience the mind when it can be very stable and focused and at the same time undisturbed by the the activity of the mind such as stories that come up past memories whatever it is it might not even be from this time it could be from way back it could be from something that has been completely forgotten, suddenly it pops up. So the idea is to come to a point where the mind is really, your attention is so firm and established that you can relax. Nothing come up in the mind, that's perfectly okay. Your mind is calm and empty, that's fine. You know, objects come up, like the sound of my voice, and then the silence afterwards. Comes and goes, doesn't it? Sometimes we forget to focus on the the silent part of our life. We don't pay much attention, maybe on the part of the mind that's very quiet. You can do, if you want, your sweeping meditation from the top of the head down to the feet. It's a good way sometimes having an object in the mind actually raise the energy because you have to put some effort to keep the mind to le to help the mind to do some work. You know holding an object in mind is a bit of work for the mind because it needs to remember and that can energize raise your energy level. So it can be the breath Sound of silence, just a well, just sitting posture. You can, you can bring into your <clears throat> formal practice this morning the element of loving kindness or metta. It's not encapsulated in the idea of a feeling. You don't have to have a feeling necessary of metta. If you don't have a feeling of metta, it's, it's not the, the end of your metta practice. is more being capable of accepting, receiving life as it moves through you. It can be a painful knee or just a mood. It can be a whole mood that has maybe invaded your chitta, your mind. 
and sometimes a mood is more difficult to see. In Thai, they use the word arom, which comes from the Pali aramana. And it's translated like a kind of general sense of, of a mood. It's like an object, really, in the mind. A Ramana, a Rom. I find this word quite helpful because we don't hear about it very much. But a mood can hide many things. Because it's like a cloud. It's like having this cloud. It can be a mood which can be light and happy, it can be in a good mood, we say, or it can be slightly negative and on the side of feeling depressed, bad mood, angry and irritated. So this part of the object of the mind, Aramana, So it's quite really important in our practice that we come to see clearly the mood. Because that could be just hiding other aspects of your mind that you won't be able to see until you really have a, got a handle on this mood. And the mood can be, as I already said before, an elated mind state, feeling really overjoyed, or so sort of disappointed and miserable, or just neutral. There's something. It's like the, you feel a bit down, just a sort of neutrality, but it's not a neutrality of equanimity and upeka. It's more the neutrality of not feeling, not, not having enough energy to actually get a handle on the mind itself. It's almost like a, a message sent to you, can't be bothered. But like all other experiences that you are aware of right now, you don't label them anymore as anicca. You just experience anicca. It's not a matter of saying this is anicca in meditation. That maybe help just to get some clarity about what you want to see, what you've heard the Buddha say, or the teachers say. But as a meditator now, we are the one who sees one's mind directly. And that's the value of meditation. You have the confidence of knowing you saw your own mind. And you saw Anicca clearly. Even in, even in somebody, if somebody told you that you did not know what you were talking about, your confidence of direct seeing of your mind will be able to say in you, I've seen it directly. I've seen it. I don't need any reinforcement, I don't need any comforting thoughts from other people, I know it. 
So experience generate the feeling of confidence. Sata, which sometimes is translated as trust or faith. And metta in this context is signifies really our capacity to see our negative reactivity or reactions to what we see, what we witness, what we listen and hear. Metta is this ability, capacity, ability to see our negative reactions towards whatever, anything, and we just see it, but don't move with it, you don't project it onto anything, you just let it pass away. Let it follow its natural course without interfering. So metta can be this kind of practice. You see your reactivity that is negative and judgmental. It can be a feeling, it can be a mood again. But you just let it be until it takes its natural course, nature of anicca, impermanence. As you pay attention closely, you will see that this aspect of metta is deeply needed, considered as our ability to refrain from criticizing, judging, desire to get rid of things. So, Metta is this ability just to hear, you hear those thoughts. Sometimes it's just simple feeling of unpleasant feeling that want to push things away. Then if you don't interfere with it, it just passes away. No more than that. You can train yourself to to be so attentive that you can see the beginning of something arising in your mind. And then you can see the space in which it's, it develops itself, it just carries on becoming. And then you can pay attention to the ending, its ending. And then the most important part is to pay attention to the after ending, what happened. So the arising, the arising of a phenomenon in the mind, whatever it is, then the presence of a phenomenon in the mind, and then as it moves through, the ending eventually in the sphere of your mind, 
and then the result of the peace that comes after this phenomenon has ended, disappeared. You can really scrutinize that level of observation. It could be with a pain or with a discomfort in the body or just notice. From time to time, you can even ask yourself if your mind feels a bit dull and blurry. You can ask yourself, what's happening? It's like poking consciousness to start waking up. What's happening? You don't need an answer. But the question was very important because your mind starts responding in its own way, maybe not in words of concept or ideas, but suddenly you have a, an experience that can show you what's happening. Or an image, or some thought, or... So you continue your walking meditation. Do you have any question about walking meditation? If everybody is clear. How many people were counting for 25 steps? Yeah. No? 15, 10? You can count steps. You know, it's not the end of the world, but you have an option. <laughs> you count them. You can count them, or you cannot. You don't don't have to count them, yeah, so, not forbidden. So we will find, uh, we come back at about, I like the idea of having one hour, is that too much, too long for you? Yeah. A bit too long, yeah. Do you really spend an hour walking? bit slow, isn't it? Yeah, some people like it, so yeah, like an hour. Well, we're going to do an hour walking then, yeah? Those who do not want to do an hour walking, you can just go and uh, do something else. <laughs> you can come back and sit here, yeah? You can come back and sit quietly, it's okay, yeah? But um, I, I, when I say one hour, I know we don't sit, we don't, I know from experience, we don't usually walk one full hour. By the time we visited this place and that place and find the right path and <laughs> wondered about how many clothes we should have or not have. <laughs> and uh, the time that you actually came to peace with the fact that you don't have such a nice mind state to do this, this, this today. You know, when you really start doing the work, it's probably at least 15 minutes have gone to into proliferation about this, that, and the other, and various duty and needs that we have. So, you can uh, please go to your walking meditation, and we can, we have an expression in French, you know, to say middle way, it's like you can cut the, the pair in half. So, when some people want one hour, other 45 minutes, we'll have 50 minutes, how about that? <laughs> So that takes us to um, about twenty past ten. With weather, yeah, twenty past ten, and we arrive start again at ten thirty. And again, if you want to full have the full benefit of your walking meditation, don't expect anything. 
just just don't expect anything whatever you might say is not it do you hear that whatever you might say it's not it it's always out of sync isn't it nice to know that we have a mind you don't quite know what is this mind that can see all this and know all this but then we just enjoy